project this week ended up needing to be a two-parter. So we're going to see cutting out this week and sewing up next week. Enjoy! This week's project is McCall's 8090. This is one that I showed on my haul and I am so excited to make this. I love dresses. I'm wearing a dress right now that I made a few weeks ago. And we're going to do the C length but with a sleeve, I may shorten it a little bit. I'm, I don't want the sleeve to be right at the elbow. I want it to be either above or below. So I'll look at that when I go to cut out. The fabric is this. It looks like a men's shirting, but it's embroidered on the bottom. Sort of looks like an eyelet lace down here. It actually has little cutouts like a lace. Super cute. I love the contrast of sort of the shirting at the top and the laciness at the bottom. It's a super lightweight um, broadcloth, almost batiste weight. It's not quite sheer, but it's pretty fine. It's going to lay beautifully. I'm going to have to show you some cutting out because normally what pattern directions show us how to cut on the lengthwise grain. But because of how this is made, this is my selvage edge. This is the other selvage edge. So I'm cutting on the cross grain this time so that I can use this beautiful edge for the bottom layer of the dress and probably the sleeve. We'll see how much I have and how it works out. This pattern only calls for, this is 45 inch wide and it says it needs three and an eighth for the largest size. I bought five because I knew I was going against the grain and I wanted to make sure I had enough of that nice selvage edge um, to do all the parts that I wanted to. I'm sure I have way more than I need, but I bought extra and I was on clearance, so it was not super expensive to get extra for this. Make sure this is a cotton, 100% cotton, and I did pre-shrink it. And what I mean by pre-shrinking is I finished off my edge, my raw edges when I got it home, the cut edges, and then I threw it in the washing machine and in the dryer, just like it's going to be treated after it's um, made up and worn as a garment. Now, if you're not going to machine wash and dry your clothing, you're going to dry clean it. Pre-shrinking is not as important for me because I hardly ever dry clean anything and it's 100% cotton. It could shrink anyway. I always treat it like it's going to be treated afterwards. I want it to shrink before I cut it out, not after. I don't want to make this a beautiful garment and then find out it's not going to fit after the first washing. Um, also, when you do that, I use the same soap I'm going to use, and I usually throw it in with some towels. So unless I have a whole bunch of um, fabric I'm treating at the same time that are in the same color way, then I'm good. But that's how you want to pre-shrink your fabric. So we're going to cut out our pieces that we need for this and head into the cutting table and start cutting out. Very important to iron out your fabric when it's wrinkled up like this, or if it has any major wrinkles before cutting. You will get an inaccurate cut if it's as wrinkled up as this. So, time to iron and then cutting. So normally when we fold our fabric, we fold selvage edge to selvage edge and cut on our fold. But because I want to use this long edge all the way down and I want my stripes to run up and down, I'm not cutting that direction. So I'm folding over just deep enough to cut my First section on the fold, I need one of these on the fold. I need three of these on the fold. So I'm gonna cut these two, fold it again, get my back and maybe one more of these, fold it again, get my sleeve and one more of these. And then what's left, I'm gonna start cutting out all the ruffles. This bottom is going to be the long ruffle, which is, let me find that piece, a big ruffle and you cut multiples of them on the fold. Let's see, this might be it. So this says lower ruffle, cut three on the fold. So we're supposed to cut three of these on the fold. So you can see it's double this for one piece and then we need that times three. What I'm going to do is just measure what that will be and cut one length this depth all the way across the bottom so I don't have any seams in my little lacy edge. If you are using an eyelet, there is a right and a wrong it's usually easy to tell along this edge or in some of these big pieces. So this is the right side, and if I flip it over, it's just not as pretty. And you can kind of see the bobbin where the embroidery was done. On the top, you should not be able to see the bobbin. So this is my right side. All right, I'm just gonna fold and cut all the way down my five yards of fabric. 
some decisions we have to make will be like on this pattern, this piece. This is the little tiny front placket and it has the grain line, not quite bias, but sort of at an angle like this. And that would make my stripes go, you can see how this edges, it makes the stripes go slightly wonky. Well, that's the very front placket. And I have to decide if I want to fudge this and not follow their grain line, but put this placket on a straight of grain so that my stripes stay straight. You also could make the stripes go the opposite direction if you wanted to, but I'm gonna make straight stripes, front placket going the same as the dress, like this. Now, if you're doing a, a floral or a lot of things that aren't a stripe, this won't matter. If you're doing a plaid, it'll show up, but it may look cute, um, and it could look cute at an angle. I just don't want that. Now this piece, which is the rest of the front, this front inset, I think I am gonna go cross grain with it, or lengthwise grain technically, so that I can have my stripes going across the body. So most of the stripes are gonna go up and down for the whole dress, except for maybe this one little pattern piece here. I'll decide that when I get there, but I definitely am going to straighten this one out. Cutting update, I have got my front and back and two of the three of Ruffle 11 cut out. Now I'm waiting on the sleeve and that little front piece for now, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut. This only needs one. Um, it's the skirt front on fold, and this is the skirt back on fold. So I've stacked them where I have because I have this little uneven jog of fabric here, and they just work out perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay those out. As I've been cutting, I've been making sure to leave this bottom preserved so you can see all of this down here. This is going to be my bottom ruffle. And I just made sure that I wasn't cutting too deep into this lacy area. And I think I need eight inches and I have 10 here. So I've got enough to not worry about it. And if I wanted to, I could even lengthen my dress a tiny bit by what I've preserved here. So I'm going to do get these two cut out. All that's left after that is I need one more ruffle of this, this is the three ruffle, um, that's the middle one. And then I need to cut this out and I have to cut two of these um, and then the sleeve. Now the sleeve, I think I'm going to move down and cut on this edge like this. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Now it's a curved, you can see how the sleeve is curved and I think I'm just gonna lose that curve just a tiny bit right here, which I wouldn't mind. That's the top of the arm right at the bicep and I think I actually would be fine with that. The other thing you could do is cut this sleeve really short like a cap in the curve and then attach this as a ruffle if you wanna keep the short sleeve, not as a ruffle, but as an attachment or a ruffle. I would be, you could do it either way. I just don't want the long sleeve with ruffle. I don't, I personally don't want that. I want a shorter sleeve, so. I'm preserving the sleeve for the very, 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 very end. Um, I also have to cut these two little collar pieces, which will easily be able to be fit in. And I am going to cut them because I have stripes going on. This one's going to be cut so the stripes go across the body. And then I think I'm going to just cut this so that the stripes are up and down again. Front ruffle, back ruffle. The front ruffle you can see is bigger because the front of the shirt is bigger. It has some shearing along the little neckline. So it's a very front large front, so front ruffle, back ruffle, these are attached to each other. Here's my third on the fold of this one, which is our next ruffle down, so ruffle number two. And then this is the third bottom ruffle right here that I've preserved. So after I get all those cut, all that's left for me are these little tiny pieces and this bottom edge. I'm cutting out the collar pieces this little front collar, here's our grain line. I wanted the front of my grain to be up and down, but that means when it comes all, the, because this is such a curvy little piece, by the time it comes to the side, where it's gonna to touch the back collar, you can see it's changed direction. So the front goes up and down, but as it goes around the collar, by the time it reaches the side seam, it's going side to side. So I cut my back collar the opposite grain. So when they come together, it's not perfect right here, but it's going to look better as it goes around. You're gonna see the grain line change. You could really spend a lot of time to make this seam match up perfectly, but when it's sewn, it's gonna be kind of like that. And that's not too bad. So something to think about when you're cutting it, or you could end up with your grain lines looking more like this, which can be done if you want it to, but I wanted mine to blend a little bit better than that. Let's talk math. This is my bottom ruffle. 
Originally, the pattern called for three pieces cut, um, and the each I measured the three pieces, so there's three pieces cut on the fold, so this is it. They measure 39 if it were opened up, and then I did 39 times three, and I got 117, so I need a ruffle approximately 117 long. Now, that includes the 5 eighths inch at each seam allowance, so it would, I could subtract that back out if I want to, and you certainly can if you wanna keep your gathers exactly the same. But because this is gathered, if I have an extra three inches or less in that gather on this bottom ruffle that's 117 inches long, I just don't think it's gonna show that much. So I'm not going to do all that math. So what I did is I put a pin here for my 117 and a half, which is like 50, or 117, which was like 58 and a half. I don't have it memorized, but I did not just write it down, or just marked it just a second ago. So this is what this is. This is my piece folded back. So this is where I'm gonna be cutting across here. And then the next thing I'm going to do is measure up from the longest point this direction. I have to have at least nine inches depth to get this pattern piece. I actually am gonna go ahead and add a little bit to it. So I'm making sure that I have enough fabric on both layers and I do. So I'm gonna cut about 10 and a half. So I'm gonna measure from here up, make a little 10 and a half mark from here up, make a 10 and a half mark, and then I'm gonna connect those across and cut it. So you just have to make sure everything's lined up just right. You don't want to match your lowest point on the back to the highest point on the front when lining this up or you're going to have a very crookedy ruffle. So I'm gonna do that and cut it out and then I'm all cut. Okay, last piece we're cutting is the sleeve. I chose to put it along this edge, so I wanna to talk to you about things that you might encounter. First of all, you have to make sure that this edge, which is what's going to get sewn to this edge, is exactly in the same place on the lace or as close as you can get. If it is, let's, if I just slide this down, like this, where this is the short end and this is a long end, it's not going to match up. You're gonna have issues. So we wanna get that as close as we can. And what I'm doing is I'm looking and lining up and what I'm going to lose a little bit of my sleeve on the top of my arm right in here. See how it gets a little shorter? Because this is a curved sleeve, I'm fine with that. I am perfectly okay with that. If you're not, do not cut the sleeve out this way. You're just not gonna be happy. Now, if let's say I move this up, which you could do, and I cut the sleeve like this. I would then have to figure out how to hem this part of the sleeve while this part stayed lace. I don't wanna do that either. I don't wanna to have to hem anything. I want this, the, what, however this falls down here is going to be my hem. I'm not gonna to have to do any hemming because this is my hemmed edge. So I, you just have to spend a little thinking time, a little maneuvering the pattern back and forth to get everything to line up. So I will be doing no hem on this sleeve. I will only have side seams and then to set it in. It's editing Stacy again to remind you that if you want to see how to sew up this project, it will be in next week's video. And after this video has been out for a week, I will come back and link it in. But if you're waiting, if you're watching it right away, you'll have to wait until next Wednesday to see how to sew this up. Happy sewing!